Hey, Cameron here with Seabutters Tech, and we are looking at the Surface Pro 10 again, this time the Ultra 5 model instead of the Ultra 7 model. Because I really wanted to know what's the difference between the between the Ultra 5 and the Ultra 7. i5 versus i7 is what we always used to say, but now it's the Ultra 5 and the Ultra 7. So what's the difference in performance between these two? Because if you look at the pricing, uh, if we go ahead and look at our configuration over here, you can see that the equivalently specced 135U versus the Ultra 7 with the 165U, there's about a $200 difference between these two devices. Um, but I've run a lot of benchmarks on these machines, and I'm here to tell you there is, well, I'll, I'll tease that a little bit. Let's look at the performance difference between the two. Okay, so don't get overwhelmed with all the data on the screen here, but we are looking at, at all of these benchmark results for the Surface Pro 10, and the 135U is distinguished in light blue, and the 165U is in dark blue. But for now, we're going to start looking at these TimeSpy results. So in TimeSpy, the max score I got in TimeSpy using the integrated graphics was 2364 on the 165U. The 135U got 2337. So we can see if you pull out a calculator, 2364 over 2337, that's only a 1% difference uh, between the Ultra 7 and the Ultra 5. Uh, so that's actually like a crazy result, right? Well, let's dig deeper. Let's look at uh, Cyberpunk. The Ultra 7 got 16.19 average frames per second. And the 135 got 17.46, so it actually did better on the Ultra 5 versus the Ultra 7 in this particular benchmark. Uh, again, this is like less than 1% on these differences, so it's really within margin of error on both of these tests so far. But let's look at Final Fantasy 15 benchmark. The i7 got 2437, and the max score I got with the 135U was 2597. So again, like, I mean, these are very close, but almost no distinguishable difference between the Ultra 5 and the Ultra 7. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, same thing. We actually saw the Ultra 5 uh, get 25 frames per second, and the Ultra 7 get 26 frames per second. So again, like so close that it doesn't even matter in all of these tests. We even saw the Ultra 5 faster sometimes, Ultra 7. Uh, faster and slower they're so close to each other and so what is going on here you may be thinking well why should I why should I even buy the ultra 5 over the ultra 7 and I'm here to tell you that you shouldn't <laughs> there's literally no reason to buy the ultra 5 over the ultra 7 unless you want 64 gigabytes of RAM because that's the only configuration that has 64 gigabytes of RAM is the ultra 7 so if you want that 64 gigabytes of RAM, yes, get the Ultra 7, but otherwise, do not waste your $200 because, man, this thing on the Ultra 5 is literally indistinguishable from the Ultra 7. And you may be wondering, why is that? Well, in past Surface devices, I've never recommended, uh, I've never really recommended buying the i5 over the i7 just because I think it's already a premium device. You're already paying a lot of money for it. You might as well get the most power you can get within the small package. So I always recommend getting the i7 version, but on the Pro 10, I don't recommend getting the Ultra 7 over the Ultra 5 at all because there's literally no performance <laughs> difference between the two of them. And that seems really strange, and maybe this is like Microsoft's dirty little secret um, that the Ultra 7 is basically like, the stupid tax apparently because they have not given any benefit to that Ultra 7 at all. Why is this? Well, let's look at the difference between the 135U, which is the Ultra 5 version, and the i7 version, 160, sorry, Ultra 7 and Ultra 5. So it's these numbers. Ultra 7 is the 165U, Ultra 5 is the 135U. Okay, but what's the difference between these two? Well, the uh, the Ultra 5 
is a 4.4 max turbo frequency. And the 165 is a 4.9 turbo frequency. And the same thing on the efficiency cores, you get 3.8 with the 165U and only 3.6. So we're talking, you know, 400 megahertz and 200 megahertz difference between the cores. And um, we'll get back to that in just a second, but let's also look at the GPU. And you can see that uh, one of them has a 1.9 gigahertz, but four J cores. And the other one has a two gigahertz max dynamic frequency, also with four cores. Um, but unlike previous versions of Surface, the i5 and the i7, and the Ultra 5 and Ultra 7, do not have a different number of cores on the graphics unit. Uh, before it was like the i5 had 80 and the i7 had 96 or one had 64 and one had 32, just depending on the generation that you're looking at. Um, but this time around, there's no difference. The architecture between the Ultra 5 and Ultra 7 is the exact same, other than these minor, minor clock speed differences. But what happens when you're actually using such a thin and light device, well, essentially, um, you get throttled anyways. Like those are peak, those are peak um, frequencies. And when by the time throttling happens, which is going to happen, you know, with any device, and I'm not talking even about heat throttling. Just in general, the device is going to power throttle to the recommended wattage. And on this, it's somewhere between th you know 30 watts and 18 watts that you might find it operating at. And that's the same whether you have the Ultra 5 or the Ultra 7. So in order to hit that, it basically drops those clock speeds down. Um, and what ends up happening is there's no distinguishable difference between the Ultra 5 and Ultra 7. You saw the benchmarks. Um, there's maybe, I mean, the biggest, if you just run a straight up like multi-threaded benchmark, um, like single core, sorry. I said multi-thread, I meant single core. You might see a, a quick difference if it's just a lightly threaded uh, item, but it didn't translate into any discernible performance difference that I could see at all. And so you saw that you saw the benchmarks. Um, so yeah, that's that's so surprising to me uh, that you can have uh you know have have paid two hundred dollars to get the ultra seven and what ends up happening is literally no discernible difference uh, <laughs> at least in in these particular applications so um i don't know what to what to tell you here other than if you are looking at a configuration of the surface pro 10 um, elephant in the room is the we have the consumer version instead of the business version coming out on Monday. But uh, if if you're in the market for for the business version, you still uh, maybe need something that doesn't require emulation. Uh, you play games that have some sort of anti cheat on them. Uh, you aren't prepared to make that full jump into the ARM ecosystem, which, as I've said before, like I'll, I need to wait to see actual benchmarks and performance before I believe it. I, I do think it will be good, but I don't think it will be for everyone for all sorts of reasons, mainly compatibility, uh, that I still think the Intel Surface Pro 10 may be the right the right device for a lot of you but but don't get that ultra 7 over the ultra 5 there's just no reason to get the ultra 7. hope you guys enjoy this analysis um i guess microsoft just decided they want to tax people to get that ultra 7 but i mean even if it were a 5 like previous generations like i've i've paid the extra money for like the 5 to 10 percent bump that that i7 gives you but there's literally no difference so hope you enjoyed this uh, analysis stay tuned for more surface pro 10 and minis forum v3 tablet coverage that i'm working on so we'll see you on future videos